This is Neil Turbin and you're watching The Metal Voice. This is Wolf Hoffman from the band Accept. Thanks Wolf for joining us today. I invented metal. You did? No, I didn't. Metal heart. But I am metal. Yes, it's awesome. How are you doing, man? Good to be here. Can you tell us about your relationship with Framus? And I saw you playing at Framus at the Key Club. Oh, yeah, yeah. In yeah. Hollywood when you guys first came out with the Teutonic Terror. Very, very good. Yeah, I mean, I, I played V's all my life, and by accident or by chance, I met Hans Peter from Wil uh, Wilfer from Framus. And uh, we were just talking. We were just having a party at my house, at the pool, actually. With, with German beer, I hope. Uh, yeah, Derby, Bratwurst, steaks, the whole nine yards, and uh, and because uh, I, I, I like Hans Peter and I like Framus, I like Warwick, all that stuff. Only the only thing was they weren't any making any guitars that I they were metal worthy, if you want. You know, they had all these other cool guitars, but they were all like like jazz and you know regular Les Paul type shape and all that. It's not my cup of tea. And I said, well, Hans Peter, if you want to really make me a guitar, make me a V shape guitar. He thought about it for a little while and then he's like, I'm gonna do it. And this is the result. That was about three years ago. And it turned out better than I've anything I've ever played, honestly. So can we take a look at that guitar real yeah, quick? Heck yeah, let's do it. Yeah. It should, we should probably look at the nicer or brand new Look at your model. This is all my models, but okay. this is a different, different, different edition. Let's look at the real, really cool one. This okay. is cool, but the other one's even cooler. Come on, let's go over here. There it is. Check this baby out. All right. So you got a float, you got a Floyd Road on, Floyd yeah, Road on this, here. These are Floyd upgrade parts. You know, look, they've got the bigger block. Right on. So it's a. Uh, Really cool finish on this baby. Beautiful job on the back there. And crafted in Germany, baby. That's awesome. And it's a great, it looks great in the lights. And what's going on with the this finish? Is a on that. Carbon fiber special job. I guess they coated it with this carbon fiber stuff and they put these lines on and then they did put this beautiful finish on top. Why don't we take it back over here? Why don't we? Take the guitar. Yeah. The other cool thing is, look, the body is sort of like half round. It's, it's got a contour on it, so it doesn't feel as much. And even the back is slightly curved. So when you play this thing, and to me, it feels like more like a strat. Would play, you know, like a, I always love strats because they're so comfortable to play because they actually they don't feel like a plank of wood. You know, they, they really feel like they, they fit your body well. So that's. So, so in your playing style, I mean, I know that you know you play, you play Gibsons before you play your other guitar and Black Beans. I'm not trying to bring up the brand, but just right. in the sense of the setup of yeah, how those so to me this are. is a perfect. Because Gibsons don't have you know usually a Floyd Rose. Gibsons don't have the Floyd Rose. Gibsons don't have the, the, the single coil. And sing, they don't have the, the rounded body like this. But like I say, these are all Strat features because I'm in the studio. I always prefer to play a Strat. Way back when I started playing on the Strat, one day I discovered the V because it looks cool on stage, but in the studio, in my free time, I always play Strats okay. because I like that tone, I like the whammy bar. So, so you do use a bar, like, yeah. Uh, so when you had the, the, the non guitar, guitars that didn't have this kind of a setup where it was just you know straight. Well, back. I always switch back and forth between the Strat and the V on stage. So Without a bar, see, right? If you see some early footage. Of us on stage, I've always had somewhere that strat because for certain sound, certain sounds or certain songs, I needed that strat. Right. I wanted the whammy bar. I wanted that, you know, that single coil sound in the neck. So I asked him to just build me one guitar that's got the best of both worlds. So Wolf, when you're playing your the guitars that you have, I'm sure you have a few. Yeah. Are you writing songs with? That guitar, the feel of that guitar in mind. Yeah, are you writing absolutely. it? With, are you writing it with your singer in mind? Yeah. Are you writing it with maybe just an idea you had that you're inspired by? How does this happen? Well, let me tell you. It usually starts with a riff. Okay. Sometimes a groove. Sometimes you have a you know certain tempo or a groove in mind, and you start. And I start just 
riding riffs, pretty much. And then we build everything on that. We've got a cool riff or groove that we very early on, Peter and I get together and we just jam on that riff for hours and see what we can do with it. We'll, we'll toss it around, turn it around 17 million times, and then start trying vocal ideas, you know. Now, the early days with Accept, I really loved the sound of the band then, like Breaker, right. and the songs that you guys had, and I thought, wow, you're never gonna, I mean, this is amazing, this is, you know, Dieter Dirk Studios, you guys are recording where the score is recorded. That's correct. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience? Yeah. I mean, the early, early records were made in some studios in Hamburg, most of I mean, the first three, I believe, and then it was a big deal for us to hook up with Dieter Dirks because he, we knew him from the Scorpions and we knew the famous Dirk Studios near Cologne. So one day uh, we made our first recordings there and it was, yeah, it was a big step for us. And then we were lucky enough to actually work with Dieter Dirks during Metal Art and he was just a very knowledgeable guy who taught us a lot, you know, we learned a lot from working with him. And uh, yeah, it was great. It was, of course, those were the days of when albums were done and everybody together for three, four weeks in the studio. Studio time was very expensive and uh, everything had to be done in four weeks no matter what because, you know, your money and your budget was running out. But so you guys, you guys got it done efficiently. We, 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 we started, yeah, we knew we, we had to be prepared. We learned the songs, the songs were all written beforehand. And, pre-recorded, demoed out in, in, in our own rehearsal studio. What about the drum sounds? I know you, one of the things that I think is benchmark for Accept is the drums, the big, you know, big arena or big rock drums, and That's the guitar the, sounds. Yeah. I've always considered your guitar sound to be, like, I like Judas Priest a lot. I like other bands well, thank a lot. You. We like Judas Priest a lot. But I like to Accept even more. We copy Judas Priest a lot. We always wanted to sound like a mix between Judas Priest and ACDC and Deep Purple. Those are the three ingredients in our sound that we all we love. We grew up listening to Deep Purple. We admired Judas Priest and ACDC when they started happening. So those were our heroes. But I mean, it's hard to beat, you know, the guitar tone for Balls to the Wall. It's hard to beat the guitar. But you know what it is on Balls to the Wall? Everybody always asks about that tone. But it really wasn't anything special. It was just an old Marshall and a bunch of pedals. And, but it's it's that riff, too, that has yes. that tone. Yes. What about the, in the early days? What was the, what was the moment that you knew that, hey, this is really working for us? Like, things are going in the right direction. Was there a gig or something that... It was such a gradual thing over such a long time. I don't think that was ever the one show that made us famous. Like, you know, it wasn't like the Beatles on the inside of a show or anything like that, where it's an overnight success. It was never like that. It was a slow, gradual build. But I can tell you that coming to the United States in 84, that was a huge step in our career. It wasn't a single show, but it was probably a single year that did it for us. Walls to the Wall was coming out, and we uh, started touring the U.S., opening for KISS. Big arenas every night. That was for us kids coming from Germany was amazing. A huge comeback. I mean, when you guys were dark for a number of years, yeah. and then all of a sudden, Teutonic Terror. I mean, what a what a song, what a riff, what, a, what an amazing, strong comeback, what a great video. I mean, all of the things that... Yeah, the stars aligned for us. I mean, wow. the timing was right. We found the right guy to do, and, and we were all still healthy and enthusiastic about it. So we just said, hey, we're going to give it another go. Because, you know, we didn't have anything to lose. We were just basically retired and, and doing other stuff in life. But we all had this passion in us. We said, you know, if the, the opportunity is there, we'll, we'll go out and kick some ass. So I was wondering what the next steps are for Accept, what you're up to now with. Uh and touring and yeah, you know, we're done touring for Brian Rage. The NAMM show is now closed for the day. Please yes, we're at the, the NAMM show. As soon as possible. We're here in Anaheim, Thank California. In case you're wondering, we're at the NAMM show. And they're kicking everyone out, except and we're the here. The lights go dimmer and dimmer, I guess. We just lost a bunch of light. But hey, I was going to say, we're going to take some time off from touring and work on the new album. Uh, it's hopefully ready early next year. Early so next year. Well, 
I don't know when it's going to come out. But any song titles? Any? Uh, I don't know. Way too early. I mean, we have, this, we have this, we, literally last week. Peter and I sat there and we came up with the first couple of riffs. And, cool. Yeah. So it's it's going to be a good long time before we get. But you know, this year something will happen and something will have to be recorded. So we'll do it. Is there is there a direction or a thought about you know? direction for the next album? Yeah, it's going to be an uh, album full of ballads and jazz. No, no We need a power bullshit. ballad album to accept, right? Like no a hole in the head. <laughs> it's going to be the same metal. old in-your-face metal, only better than ever. That's our motto every time that we make a record. We don't want it to be different, we just want it to be better. So, that's right on target, only better than ever before. That sounds easy, but we'll see.